afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's update plan. Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue à cette mise. Welcome everyone and welcome to today's update on New Brunswick's return to school plan. The spokespersons today are Dr. Jennifer Russell and the Education Deputy Ministers Marcel Davois and George Daly. For the province today are Dr. Jennifer Russell, the province's Chief Medical Officer of Health and Deputy Ministers of Education and Early Childhood Development, George Daly and Marcel Lavoie. Dr. Russell? Thank you, Danielle. Merci, Danielle. Um, before I get started today, uh, good afternoon. Bon après-midi. I just wanted to draw a parallel between the approach we're using with EECD and all of the information that public health has been working with uh, with them to help them with their plan and the back to school uh, situation and, and how that's being communicated right now. As you remember, at the beginning of the pandemic, we worked really closely with um, the regional health authorities and EMP and ANB around uh, making sure that plans are in place to uh, protect hospital staff and hospital space and things like that and, and, and frontline workers and essential workers. And moving into this part of the pandemic, we're using the same approach with respect to helping teachers and students and parents and staff um, be very aware of what they can do uh, in the school setting and what they need to be prepared for. And, and, and again, this really is an essential service that uh, the schools are providing to our students right now. So they really deserve a lot of support and a lot of encouragement at this point in time. So before I start, I just wanted to mention that our approach at first when this pandemic started, it was mostly about essential workers, hospital workers, and also protecting our hospital staff. And we were also wondering what to do with what should we do outside these institutions because we're also responsible for protecting the public not people just involved with schools and parents and staff uh, to, to participate in continuing to help us along in this pandemic in terms of following public health advice because we have a collective uh, responsibility and a collective role to play in, in how we succeed with the rolling out of the schools because all of the plans that we have in place really are you know, in, in an ideal situation, we don't have Im a lot of imported cases and thereby the school systems are protected in terms of those closed institutions. Um, and so again, we, we're, we're focusing on what we can do within the school system, but at the same time, we have to know that the public at large also still has a continued responsibility to help us uh, succeed with this next planning and next phase of, of what, where we are in the pandemic. So, um, Today, before uh, I give my official remarks, um, I just wanted to touch on the update for public health in terms of a new case of COVID-19 today. This is a travel-related case uh, in Zone 1 in the Moncton region, uh, and the person is self-isolating at the moment. Um, and this new case is an individual between 10 and 19. So again, this is, um, this is an expected situation. We expect there will continue to be travel-related cases. And uh, if, if things continue to go as well as they can go, then those people will be self-isolating uh, at the time of their diagnosis, thereby reducing the number of close contacts and thereby reducing the number of uh, uh, risks of transmission of COVID-19 to other people. So the number of confirmed cases in New Brunswick is now 190. There are 10 active cases. There have been two deaths and 178 cases have recovered. Uh, alors, just pour, uh, so just to inform you, well, I would like to provide an update that public health is reporting one new case of COVID-19 today. This is something that doesn't surprise us. We know that this situation will continue. We will have cases related to travel. And this new case is an individual between 10 and 19 years old in Zone 1, Moncton region. The case is travel related and the individual is self-isolating. And this is something that we are pleased to report. If we have any cases, these people are isolating when they are uh, when they have their diagnostics. So it means that they cannot spread the virus to other people. They are alone at home or they are in a house 
with their very close contacts. So the number of confirmed cases in New Brunswick is 190, and there are 10 active cases. There have been two deaths, and 178 cases have recovered. So school is all about reading, writing, and math, So, or so they used to tell us back then. But we all know there is much more to school than what can be found in the pages of a textbook. That's why it is so important that New Brunswick schools can reopen safely so that our children can enjoy the full educational experience It's all about social skills and mental health, so it's important that New Brunswick schools can reopen safely so that our children can enjoy the full educational experience that they have missed since the COVID-19 pandemic began. A tick or what school is all about, or so they used to tell us. But we all know that there is much more to school than can be found in the pages of a textbook. And that's why it's so important that New Brunswick schools can reopen safely so that our children can enjoy the full educational experience that they have missed since the COVID-19 pandemic began. Uh, closing New Brunswick schools was the right decision in March, and I have no doubt that school closures helped slow the spread of COVID-19 in the early weeks of the pandemic and thus saved many lives. But I also believe that reopening schools right now is the right decision. La décision de fermer les écoles au Closing New Brunswick schools was the right decision in March. I have no doubt that school closures helped slow the spread of COVID-19 in the early weeks of the pandemic and thus saved many lives. And I also believe that opening schools now is the right decision. Our children must go back to school, but not only for what happens in the classroom, though that is very important. Our children need to see their friends, interact with their teachers and other school staff, and thereby learn to navigate the world around them. They need to socialize, learning how to solve problems and manage emotions. They need to be a part of a community, and this is very important for resiliency. A lot of research shows that students' resiliency at school is very important and is very important for mental health, and it's also very important for different parts of their development. And so they need to be part of a community, which you can't entirely get through a computer screen though today's teens are definitely giving it a good try. Back to school, and not just for what happens in the classroom, though that is very important. Our children need to see their friends, interact with their teachers and other school staff, and thereby learn to navigate the world around them. They need to socialize, learning how to solve problems and manage emotions. They need to be part of a community, which you can't entirely get through a computer screen, although today's teens, and I, I have two of them, are definitely giving it a good try. Um, alors, euh, y avait un rapport en 2017. There was a report in 2017, and it was by Canada's top doctor. And the report was about students' resiliency and how relationships between educational staff and communities were very important to improve resiliency. Chief Public Health Officer for Canada released a, a, a report that was really great in terms of highlighting the aspects of resilience, community connections, school connections, connections with teachers and, and parents um, that really fostered uh, an increased improvement in resilience and also a decrease in mental health issues including substance use. So, so we know that students need to be with their peers to explore their interests, enhance their talents and creativity and their mental health and social development depend on that. Um, so our children need and deserve the full school experience while keeping them as safe as we can from COVID-19. And I'll just repeat that, as safe as we can from COVID-19. And as many of the things that we can control in the setting of the school, the way we have things um, set up right now in terms of the back-to-school approach and, and, and the processes that we have in place, 
We can't eliminate the fact that the pandemic exists in the world. We can't eliminate the fact that there are cases in Canada. We can't eliminate the fact that there will continue to be travel-related cases in the province. What we don't want to see is we don't want to see community transmission. We don't want to see cases um, that affect uh, that that effectively become transmitted um, in an increasing manner due to um, gatherings, large gatherings, as we've seen in other provinces in Canada, and, and indeed in other jurisdictions. So while we've seen really positive effects in other jurisdictions that have successfully uh, wrestled COVID-19 numbers to the ground. There have been resurgences in other jurisdictions. So we do have to keep our mind focused on that, that we're going to do everything we can to keep everybody safe as possible during this phase. And if things change as, as things evolve, we will continue to look at, um, at the numbers, we'll continue to review our processes and, and adjust as we need to. Alors, je voulais juste toucher sur le point que... So I just wanted to say... that if there are COVID-19 cases in other countries and in other provinces in Canada, we need to manage those situations, what we can control outside the schools and the system and within schools. So we will do this very safely, as safely as possible. Just as public health takes many forms, we must strike a balance in protecting our children's physical health so that their mental well-being is not impaired. Nos enfants ont besoin de revenir dans leur salle de classe. Our children need to be in the classroom to continue their education, but they also need to be on the stage, on playing fields, and in school clubs and activities that are vital to their growth and development. Those are essential for their growth and development. And I would like to add that all of this is included in the plan for public health as well. When New Brunswick schools reopen next month, there will be opportunities for social growth and physical activity as well as classroom learning. My office has been working with the Department of Education and Early Childhood Development to develop protocols for school activities so that parents and guardians can feel secure about their children's participation. And as I mentioned, I'm a mom as well. So I got in touch with my teenagers and I told them about going to school safely. We talked about hand washing, physical distancing whenever possible, wearing masks, and also how to travel to school safely. Back to school, the wearing of masks, the washing of hands, what the transportation is going to be like, and the physical distancing. So we do need to have those conversations with our kids, and we need to be comfortable with that information. Our children need to be in the classroom to continue their education, but they also need to be on stage, on playing fields, and in school clubs and activities that are vital to their growth and development. And again, this is all evidence-based information from uh, public health research around what contributes to resilience, what contributes to thriving and flourishing. Um, so when New Brunswick schools reopen next month, there will be opportunities for social growth and physical activity as well as classroom learning. My office has been working with the Department of Education and Early Childhood Development to develop protocols for school activities so that parents and guardians can feel secure about their children's participation. These activities will look different because COVID-19 is still with us and it will continue to be with us. There will be risks which we will try to reduce but we cannot eliminate. When our children play sports, there will be fewer people in the stands and on the sidelines. Ces activités se déroulent these activities will look different because the virus is still among us and this virus will stay with us for some time. But research shows, like when our children play sports and activities, this is very important for mental health, their development and resiliency. There will be risk, which we will try to reduce but cannot eliminate completely. When our children play sports, there will be fewer people in the stands and on the sidelines. This may be limited to allow for physical distancing, and some clubs and activities may be virtual. And there will be some activities that are not advised at this time. But it is my hope that students will take advantage of the opportunities that school activities outside the classroom provide to them. This is an important, um, an important part of school life. 
And as a parent, I, I know that this is what I want for my children. And I am sure that every New Brunswick family wants their children to have the best school year they can have. And I do believe this is possible. Again, knowing that as the situation evolves globally and in this country and in our Atlantic bubble and indeed in our province, that we will continue to respond as we have throughout the pandemic. I believe that our kids can be safe be well, and be active at school while they learn and grow. This is the picture of health that I want all of our children to be. En tant que parent, je sais que, as a mom, I know that that's what I wish for my children. I'm convinced that every New Brunswick family wants their children to have the best school year they can have. And I believe this is possible. I believe that our kids can be safe, be well, and be active at school while they learn and grow. This is the picture of health that I want all of our children to be. And I know that we will need the cooperation of all student staff, all teachers, parents, community members, and students as well. So if we all work together and if we can support the school community, school staff, as well as teachers, it will be best for everyone involved. Work ahead of us, and I know that, again, so far we've come through the pandemic with some really positive results, and uh, I would like to build on that and make sure that we can continue to collaborate and cooperate and be supportive and be compassionate and be kind. And again, I know we have a lot of work ahead of us, but the, way, the best way to move forward is collaboratively and together, and I believe we can succeed. So thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Good afternoon, everyone. Sports and physical education are so important to a child's development and their overall education. Students cannot be in a position to reach their full potential if we don't take their physical and mental health into account in educational planning. Ensuring students learn about physical activity and participate is extremely important to the Department of Education. To make sure students have plenty of opportunity to be active and stay healthy, we have developed guidelines for physical education and school sports in our return to school planning. Our planning was guided by the principles Dr. Russell has just laid out. We are encouraging teachers to use outdoor spaces as much as possible for physical education throughout this coming year. We understand, however, that this may not always be feasible, so students will, of course, be permitted to use the gymnasium. Students will wash and sanitize their hands uh, each time before entering and leaving physical education class. If schools need to use alternate spaces indoors because the gym is not available, the school will be asked to reach out to district facility staff to determine a suitable alternate space. Enhanced cleaning protocols will be implemented for changing rooms and shared equipment. Equipment will be disinfected after each use, and if this is not impossible, uh, the equipment should not be used. Change rooms will be cleaned a minimum of three times a day. Students in kindergarten to grade eight must stay within their classroom grouping while using the changing room. Students in grades nine to 12 must maintain physical distancing of one meter while in the changing room, the same as they would in their classrooms. Students in kindergarten to grade eight will participate in physical education within their own class grouping or bubble. Sporting equipment may be shared uh, during and in this class grouping. As in the classroom groupings, these students and these groups will have to uh, physically distance one meter between different groups. We will continue uh, to encourage age appropriate practices within the groups such as proper hygiene etiquette, reduce physical contact like discouraging high fives and handshakes. They will maintain a two meter spacing from each other within the groups. In addition, any teachers or coaches that are not part of the regular classroom grouping will also have to maintain the two meter spacing. If two groups are in the gym at the same time, a divider or a curtain may be used to help separate the groups. High school students will keep a minimum of one meter physical spacing throughout physical education as they would again in their regular classrooms. The use of markings, for instance, like floor tape, pool of hoops, cones, and general signage is recommended to indicate where students can sit, stand, or participate accordingly to physical distancing guidelines. 
Intramural sporting activities will be permitted for K-8 students within their own bubble or for high school students when they can maintain physical distance. This is provided that the province or the health zone remains in yellow phase. If a zone moves to orange or red, then all intramural activities will then be suspended. In the event of an outbreak in a school, regional public health will provide direction to the school for partic participation in intramural activities. Parents will, of course, be informed of the outbreak and any resulting changes in school operations, including impacts on physical education and intramural sports. Over the 2021 school year, interscholastics and other extracurriculars will also be able to take place while we are in the yellow phase with enhanced safety protocols. Any interscholastic or extracurricular activity or event will require an operational plan that is based on the direction from public health officials. Kindergarten to grade 12 competitive sports events should be limited to subdivisions of school districts or within small regions to allow and limit interactions across different regions. Spectators will be limited to 50 people for outdoor settings and spectators should uh, maintain a physical distance of two meters. No spectators will be allowed for events held within schools, though virtual viewing options are encouraged if possible. In the case where an organized sport has a provincial sport organization governing body, such as Hockey New Brunswick, Soccer New Brunswick, the level of a play and associated modified rules will comply with the operational plans of that body. If there is no governing body, the sport must have a province-wide operational plan that complies with the standards outlined in our return to school plan. The department will collaborate with school districts in the development of the provincial plans. Students will also be able to continue to participate in other school clubs and activities by following these same guidelines. If possible, we recommend that some of these activities take place virtually. For instance, student governance meetings or clubs. We are finalizing directions for music education and music related extracurriculars. That information will be coming to you uh, hopefully this week. For these plans to work and for us all to stay in the yellow phase, it will be essential for us all to work together. That means we are counting on parents and students to continuously monitor their health and make sure they are only coming to school or participating in sporting events if they are not showing any symptoms. Now I will invite Marcel Labois, Deputy Minister of Education and Early Childhood from the Francophone sector to come and speak and uh, share our extracurricular activities and club information. Thank you. Bonjour tout le monde. Hello everyone, thank you for being here and thank you, George. First off, I would like to say that it's essential for our students' education to make sure that they have access to physical activity, but also activities at events that give them the opportunity to express their interests and passions. By allowing students to participate in sports events and other extracurricular activities, we are promoting their social skills and their mental and physical well-being, as Dr. Jennifer Russell indicated. And we're also encouraging teachers to use outdoor spaces as much as possible for physical activity throughout the school year that will start in September. Students from K to 8th grade will take part in physical education classes within their class groupings. Sporting equipment can be shared within this group. As in classrooms, these groups will not have to maintain physical distancing during physical education classes. Class groups do not interact with students from other groups. A two-meter distance will have to be maintained between bubbles. Teachers and coaches who are not part of this bubble will also need to maintain this two meters distance. High school students will need to maintain a physical distance of at least one meter during physical education classes, as is the case in other classrooms. I would like to mention that all of those precaution measures that apply to sports activities also apply to other extracurricular activities. For example, reading clubs, chess clubs, or astronomy clubs. 
intramural sporting activities will be authorized for students from the from kindergarten to eighth grade if they stay in their same bubbles. For high school students, they can also participate in intramural sports, but they need to respect the recommended physical distance. And all of this if the province or the health zone is still in the yellow phase. If a zone is in the orange or red phase, all the intramurals activities will need to be suspended until further notice. Throughout the 2020-2021 school year, interscholastic and other extracurricular activities can happen if the region stays in the yellow phase. An operational plan based on public health authorities' guidelines will need to be drafted for all activity or all other interscholastic or extracurricular activities. The competitive sporting events from kindergarten to 12th grade should be limited to a small regions to limit to, to limit contacts between regions. The number of spectators will be limited to 50 people in outdoor settings and spectators should maintain a physical distance of two meters between them. This means that we do not encourage more than one family member per player for sporting activities or competitions that will happen inside of a school, no spectator will be allowed for activities in an arena or all other space managed by a municipality, the limited number of spectators will, be res will need to be respected for the operational plan of this establishment. And for sports, the list of teams will need to be kept at a reasonable number and this includes coaches, to facilitate contact tracing. So this means that we will need to take attendance of all participants for every game for, or for every practice. If a school organizes an event, it must have a list of all participants, including coaches, players, and volunteers. Carpooling will not be recommended. Parents must be ready to bring their child to practices or training sessions. Participants will need to be ready with all required material. Changing rooms could not be available unless an operational plan allows it. Participants will have no useless physical contact, for example, high fives or handshaking. We are encouraging them to express team spirit through other means for example, clapping or congratulating the other team. And prizes will not be given immediately after an event, but instead of a prize ceremony, a verbal recognition could be given. In the cases where any organized sports have a provincial sport organization governing body, for instance, hockey in New Brunswick or soccer in New Brunswick, the level of play and associated modified rules will comply with the operational plans developed by that body. After this press conference, the Association of Inter Interscholastic Sports of New Brunswick will publish a return plan that has more details about certain sports that can be played. We are collaborating with this association and public health to draft these plans, and we thank them for their cooperation. If there is no governing body for a sport, the sport must have a province-wide operational plan that complies with the standards outlined in the return to school plan. Direction for school district and schools. Once again, I would like to remind you that we all have a role to play to reduce the risk transmission of COVID-19 within our communities. And to remind you, I would like to inform families that the return to school plan, direction for school districts and schools, that's a document that has a lot more details. It's available on our website. And you can find a link. Before I finish, I would like to say that we are still finalizing directions for music education and music-related extracurricular activities, such as band and choir. So this will come later on. So by working together, we can help New Brunswick students stay healthy, stay safe, and continue to be active. Thank you for your attention.
Media, each reporter will have one question. You can pose your question in the language of your choice. Nous allons maintenant procéder aux questions. We will now proceed with media questions. You can ask your questions in the language of your choice. Tim Rozelle, Global News. Your question, please. Hi there. I'm just wondering if um, any decision has been made regarding field trips. I know that there are a lot of uh, facilities that uh, that kids may go to as part of, uh, of field trips that, that you know, may not be available right now or, or may be available to a lesser extent, but uh, I was wondering if field trips were, were going to be addressed in this in this part of the update or, uh, or whether that's something that's still sort of being decided. Anybody can answer that go right ahead. Uh, thank Tim. Thanks, Tim. If, if you go to our website, uh, the full document is there and field trips are uh, uh, sp specifically uh, mentioned. Uh, students are allowed to do field trips uh, within their bubble, K to 8, and if they can maintain social distancing at the 9 to 12 levels uh, and maintain social distancing where they're, they're traveling to, uh, they will be allowed to do field trips. So in our documents, you can find more details about this issue. So kindergarten to grade 12 can take part in these extracurricular activities. And for high school students, well, students will be allowed to take part in those activities if a physical distance of two meters can be maintained. County TV. Hi, Adley. First question for Dr. Russell. Dr. Russell, some parents are expressing concern that it can take up to five days from when 811 is called to when results are received from testing, and they're concerned that this will lead to not just to absences from school, but also loss of time from work for parents. Um, are there any efforts being made to ensure it takes the least amount of time possible this fall to get results? Yeah, absolutely, Vicky. So we are aware of this concern, and so we, we are discussing uh, to make sure that we can expedite things uh, in, in terms of the lessening the impact on students and parents. But certainly, I think conversations with employers need to happen to make the, um, the, the expectation, um, having that conversation around the fact that many students will have to get tested, which will mean, you know, uh, a wait time for, for finding out. And it could be a day. Hopefully, it's less than 24 hours. Hopefully, it's less than 48 hours. But again, we will we'll be doing our best to make sure that the, the, it's, the, it's the least amount of time possible. But again, I think parents and students and, and et cetera should be aware of that expectation. Thank you, Dr. Russell. Thank you, Vicki. Kate Walker, CTV News. Hi there. My question was already answered. Thank you. Thank you. Mia Urquhart, CBC. Hi. My question is about the caveat about governing bodies and how this will all work. Um, just using basketball New Brunswick as an example, they just announced that it's that they're moving into stage four, which essentially means no restrictions. So does that mean that school basketball teams will be governed by those rules? And so does that mean no spectators? Uh, thanks, Mia. A couple of parts to your question. First of all, um, yes, any, any sport that is uh, within the school realm that has a provincial body out there and has an operational plan already approved, we will be following those operational plans and whenever the school sport starts, whatever phase that the provincial body is in at that time will be the phase that the s school sport will begin in. So basketball New Brunswick, uh, if, if they are in their second or third phase by the time that basketball would start uh, at a school level, that would be the phase uh, that they, they would begin. Thank you, George. Thank you, Mia. Matsu Mazin. So I would like to go back to the previous question. So when they are sport organizations like Hockey New Brunswick or Soccer New Brunswick, some organizations are not controlled. For example, Hockey New Brunswick did not control school hockey. Is it still the case? Or 
will we rely on those bodies' guidelines? Well, ultimately, the activities that are managed by Interscholastic Sports Association, well, they will develop their own operational plan based on our guidelines. Other groups already developed, and we will continue to work with them to make sure that everything is aligned. But ultimately, what we try to do is to have a general rule for every sport, and then we needed to find answers either from the Interscholastic Sports Association in New Brunswick or other organizations that you just mentioned. And maybe in some cases, some sports will not be regulated by anybody. So then we will need to work with school districts to, to find some, some answers. Mathieu? Just wondering if you can be as specific as to what sports will be uh, available in the fall and what next steps are to enacting those sports. I'm thinking of uh, something like football, for instance. This is for George Daly, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure Marcel or I both could kick in on this one. Uh, so a, a couple of things are going to happen. One, the, the phase documents that we're following that have been uh, that have been approved by public health that were developed by other bodies. Um, that is the operational plan we're going to follow. The governance of the leagues, if they fall under the NBIA, will remain under NBIA's jurisdiction. So later today, perhaps uh, within a few minutes, uh, NBIA is going to release uh, some communication to the system, uh, and it will go sport by sport to indicate where things uh, are with each one as to, to whether they are going ahead completely or if they're going ahead with restrictions and which particular phase uh, that they're going to be in according to that. Um, if there's a sport that does not fall under the NBIA's jurisdiction and there's not an operational plan, then it will come back to us at EECD to work to, uh, to develop that operational plan and make those decisions. Thank you, George. Marcel? Thank you, Bill. Thank you, George. Alexander Silverman, CBC. Thank you. Yeah, this is for Dr. Russell. Uh, Public Safety is investigating a large gathering of boats at a event on the August long weekend. Uh, there seems to be a replay of another gathering earlier in the summer at Grand Lake. Are you concerned that people have stopped taking your warning seriously? Hi there. Um, so large gatherings are always a concern. As you know, out west in, uh, in some of the western provinces where they've seen a surge in numbers, they are as a result of large gatherings. So the whole issue around physical distancing, wearing masks when you can't physically distance, washing your hands, etc., is still very, very important. And probably more important now as we, as we move into the next phase of having schools reopen, that any importation of cases that are travel related, which we expect to see, uh, will only be contained if people are self-isolating as they should be. Uh, we do know, again, that people can be asymptomatic and, and, uh, and, and we know that, that they do have to self-isolate for 14 days to prevent that transmission to other people. And we want to keep New Brunswick in the yellow phase. And again, I think there's many, many students and teachers and parents out there uh, who want to keep their kids in school and, and not want to see any kind of negative impacts of, of large gatherings that we've seen out west. So for us to keep the numbers of COVID-19 low enough to continue to have the open socioeconomic state that we're in right now in terms of, 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 of being very um, uh, successful thus far, we won't be able to maintain that success if people don't adhere to the guidance that we've already put out and that people have been adhering to. So we just have to keep that in mind, that we are all in this together and any kind of breach in, in that um, those guidance and directions from public health can result in, in increasing numbers, 
increased number of outbreaks, increased duration of outbreaks, and number of people being affected, and community transmission. So we just don't want to see that. And the only way to protect ourselves against that is again being aware of community, being aware of imported cases that are coming inside the Atlantic bubble uh, every day in terms of people uh, needing to self-isolate when they're coming in from outside of the Atlantic bubble, and really adhering to those directions uh, for the safety of their own families and friends and community members, but also for the teachers, staff, and students uh, in the school system right now. Thank you, Dr. Russell. Thank you, Alexander. Adam Harris, Brunswick News, your question, please. Thank you. Um, you talked about uh, what um, NDIA sports, but putting that aside, you said you're still working on music and choirs, but are there any other clubs that you feel too risky to go ahead? Um, and, and when will you get a determination on, on music and um, choirs? Uh, as I indicated earlier, uh, school clubs will be able to go ahead. Uh, they will need to respect uh, social distancing, uh, and we are encouraging that they happen virtually. Uh, we are hoping for a message around music uh, later this week. Um, we're still working on a few items, uh, but uh, we're getting close on it. Thank you. Thank you, George. Hansen? We come online. Yes, as we mentioned earlier, all clubs, like chess clubs and other extracurricular activities within schools, for example, science groups, all those clubs are still encouraged. We still need to define and specify certain things regarding those groups. But we still encourage those groups to meet virtually, if at all possible, just to promote physical distancing. Uh, your question, please. Acadie Nouvelle. Yes, so you talked about the update of the association. Do you have an idea of the date for that association's update for the uh, Interscholastic, Interscholastic Sports Association? Could you please uh, specify the end of your question? What was the, uh, the end? of your question. You were looking for a date or Simon? I didn't hear your answer. I apologize. I was just asking for a specification. We just didn't understand what you said at the end of your question. Okay, very well. Thank you. Could you please repeat your question, Simon, please? I was just waiting to see what will be the date for the uh, return to play plan for the uh, Interscholastic Sports Association? The plan is already developed and it will be made accessible right after this uh, press conference. CFIEFM, your question, please. Yes, hello. My question is about daycares. I would like to know if any measures were taken, if we notice that that children from different school groups should not be close to one another outside of schools. So preventative measures for schools were developed by taking into account the situations at daycare. So it's not the same environment. It's not the same situation. We're trying to reduce risk and to be aligned as much as possible in certain situations. Some practices can differ, but the idea is to reduce risk as much as possible. Thank you, Maxime. Thank you, Jeremy. Radio Canada. Your question, please. Geneviève Normand, Radio Canada. Are you there? Okay. Today's update, we will return on Thursday, August 27th. Thank you. Voilà la fin. This concludes today's update. We will be back 
on Thursday. Thank you.